Hi everybody, it is March 25, 2019. This is the mercenary, the private military contractors, the Eric Prince, Blackwater, we are coming video that I said that I was going to be posting. I'm going to be linking uh, or uh, working off of several articles. Every article will be linked below, linked below this video. And I'm not going to be reading much from many of the articles. So if you want to learn in depth about private military contractors all over the world, this industry increasing rapidly, click on the links, read it. But I'm going to start again with this. Mattis is out and Blackwater is back. We are coming. Blackwater after Trump had stated that he was going to be uh, drawing down on the troops, the 2,000 U.S. forces in Syria, 7,000 in Afghanistan, Blackwater comes out with this ad in Recoil magazine, full page, and all it said, we are coming, Blackwater. That in itself really should raise eyebrows. Like, what, what is this black water? It's rather ominous and dark and, well, it seems a bit on the evil side. It is. We are coming. Where, where, where are you coming, black water? All over the world. So, <laughs> Eric Prince proposed to take over the war in Afghanistan, privatize it. Now you know how much Trump loves to privatize. So here is the blueprint for Eric Prince's five billion plan to privatize the Afghanistan war. Um, look, you know, all we hear coming out of mainstream media and the government officials and our uh, generals and Pentagon officials is that we're in Afghanistan for our own security. Do Americans not know that we are in Afghanistan, we are in all of these countries to take them over, to uh, expand our military influence all over the world, and to steal their resources, minerals, oil. So when I listen to all of this and these mainstream media is Oh, God, they ask their questions, and these guys answer it, and it's all bullshit. It's, everything's bullshit. So, yeah, when Americans put their nation's credibility on the line, privatizing, privatizing it is probably not a wise idea. What credibility does the United States have? None. So, BS to that as well. And here is the, the summary of Eric Prince's plan. Swap out the people. Uh, the 23,000 multinational forces in Afghanistan. You want to talk about taking over a country. Uh, as if Afghanistan had anything to do with what happened, 9-11. That was the first country we invaded. And we're still there. Jeez. The U.S. military, the most powerful military in the world, can't seem to succeed with these wars. What's going on? Oh, because success ain't the, uh, that's not the plan. It's not the objective. The objective is to invade countries and stay there permanently. So, you know, we talk about, oh, God, our U.S. military, well, it's been trying for so many years, and it's doing the Russian blueprint, you know, Russia failed, the United States failed, so Eric Prince wants to bring Blackwater in to get the job done. What's the job? Exploitation of minerals. All right, I'll get to that in a second. No more NATO mission, command and control, uh, no rotations, a private air force. Wow, private armies, man. So if you have a lot of money, you can, you can 
establish your own private army. Multinational corporations do it all the time. Um, but because there's no international regulation of it, no international laws for mercenaries, ACA private military contractors, um, yeah, now we have these private armies all over the world. And we use them here. Remember Katrina? Blackwater in New Orleans. A fraction of the cost. What accountability? Uh, what about long-term care? Yes, U.S. taxpayers pay for the private military contractors to invade countries. And if any of these contractors get hurt, you pay for their medical care. Sound good to you? All right, are private military contractors any different from mercenaries? Global market for mercenaries and private military contractors is worth more than 100 billion. And the lines that differentiate the two are blurry. US-based firms, along with private military contractors from the UK are serving all around the world, especially in conflict, uh, conflict zones. In Africa, the Middle East, Afghanistan, mercenaries are banned by international law, while PMCs are considered legal. Oh, okay, so uh, you hire mercenaries, which these private military contractors do, and then they become legal. Great, isn't it? Um, Mercenaries don't have any tie to a company or a state and title. They only fight for money. Well, that's true with the private military contractors as well. But private soldiers are working for a recognized company that is registered with authorities of a country where their operations are based out of. The skill sets are the same. The only difference is who is the client, state or non-state state government or non-state co corporation. Um, private military contractors have access to much more complex and heavy military equipment like tanks, helicopter, and planes. Huh. How are these private, private security companies getting hold of military equipment? That seems a little odd, doesn't it? Well, they do. Um, private military contractors cooperate with mercenaries and recruit them, despite a UN ban, on mercenaries. When a client hires a company, often that company will hire or make subcontractors in a war zone to help execute missions. These are nicknamed subs in the industry, and there is often little accountability for them. British contractor Armour Group, providing air base security for the U.S. in Afghanistan, had subcontracts with two Afghan military companies named Mr. White and Mr. Pink. Remember Armour Group, Mr. White and Mr. Pink. I'll get back to that in a sec. Countries usually prefer to use the PMCs for several reasons. A lack of human resources in the armed forces, their perception of being more cost efficient, nepotism, and a good contract with governments to avoid responsibility for the acts committed by private military contractors, to avoid the control of democratic institutions, and to intervene in the internal affairs of a country, mostly foreign, Venezuela. That was um, just posted today. Importing mercenaries into Venezuela to take over that country. It is impossible to know how many people are recruited in this sector. Contractors in Iraq would not be bound by local laws, and they might not necessarily be subject to US laws. Well, that's true in a lot of countries. Uh, so that results in lack of accountability. But remember 2004, the Muslim prisoners in Abu Ghraib? Remember? 
private security contractors. And the company was not held liable. CACI International evaded punishment and continued to get 23 million in contracts with the United States. Private military contractors hire thugs. Thugs. Blackwater, now called Academy, has one of the most checkered histories among private contractors. 2007, some Blackwater soldiers allegedly opened fired on civilians in Baghdad. 17 civilians were killed. Many others were wounded in this incident. incident. Um, they were found guilty. And Eric Prince has apparently based on he marrying into or his sister marrying into a political family with a lot of power Betsy Davos. Betsy Davos has opened the door to the White House for Eric Prince to have his meetings with Trump. Now, that is what um, has been alleged. Can you prove it? Uh, it's very hard. But he did have meetings with Trump. He's trying to privatize the war in Afghanistan. And Trump loves to privatize. He loves the private sector. He loves to give his friends millions and billions of dollars. The mercenary world is growing and far more dangerous than people know. This is by design since mercenaries sell plausible deniability and lethality in the shadows. Mercenaries can offer more secrecy than government spies or special forces. 500 mercenaries hired by Russia almost wiped out a group of elite U.S. soldiers in eastern Syria. The Americans came from Delta Force Rangers, uh, Green Berets, Marines. They called them B-52s, F-22s, F-15s, AC-130 gunships, and it took them four hours. Oh, wait, I forgot the Apache helicopters and drones. <clears throat> took them four hours to be back 500 mercenaries. And this was America's finest. It begs the question, what happens when non-elite troops not backed by the U.S. Air Force have to fight 1,000 or 5,000 mercenaries? What happens to countries that are not military superpowers? The mercenary threat is a significant concern. And this was from McFate. And McFate is a... Uh, let me get back to where McFate is. Sorry, it was Sean McFate, who um, has experience uh, working for private contractors in Africa after previously serving as a U.S. Army paratrooper, and he is in this interview, uh, Sean McFate, which is an interview that I highly recommend everyone click on the link below, listen to the full interview, which I'm going to to only be playing um, excerpts of it, but um, so they're they're all over, and they operate here in our country, and you know government militaries will become obsolete, and when you know these private security companies hiring they hire a lot from latin america the mercenaries in latin america um well just like police forces domestic police law enforcement they're hiring the worst of and of the worst so take a look at 30 most powerful private security companies in the world i'm not going to read anything about it, um, but they're all over. And these, these armies are huge, you know, from uh, over 500,000, and I think that's DynCorp, um, to 27,001. You've got um, in 
the UK, there are security firms that have huge amounts, like over here, 150,000. So you're talking these private security firms, you add up the amount of troops, mercenaries that they have hired, you've got over, well over 1 million. So the Department of Defense did acknowledge that we have private security contractors in Syria for the first time in April 2018. So when Obama was saying no boots on the ground, we had boots on the ground. They were private security contractors in Syria. And between Syria and Iraq, that region, there are 47,400 contractors working for the Department of Defense. And here, uh, 1,932 armed security contractors in Afghanistan, only 416 are American citizens. Now, didn't we go into these countries to protect the security of the United States? So why do you really think that all the people that are hired by these private security contracting firms, they hire uh, from African nations, they hire from Latin American nations, and only a small percentage are American. Do you really think that these private security contracting mercenaries care about the U.S. security? Wow, um, 10 billion, 2016, 10 billion was dished out by Pentagon, by the Pentagon, for private security service providers, 10 billion, your money. This is a very good article, America's Addiction to Mercenaries. And it was written by one who helped raise a new army in Liberia, bought and shipped weapons. Yeah, they do arms trafficking. Bought and shipped weapons from Eastern Europe to Africa U.S. Special Operations Forces, for instance, have contractors working in Syria. Uh, mission creep. Because contractors don't count as boots on the ground, Congress does not consider them to be troops, doesn't count them. So, when, when Trump says, uh, I'm bringing home 2,000 troops from Syria, do you think that, well, what, wait, I thought, didn't he say no boots on the ground? Well, Obama said it over and over. Uh, we've got no boots on the ground. We're just bombing Syria. How could he be withdrawing 2,000 troops from Syria? All right. Well, he says, we're, we're, we defeated ISIS. Our troops are coming home. You think that's the end? No because we've got thousands of private security contractors and they are filling that void. U.S. government does not track contractor numbers in war zones. As a result, the government can put more people on the ground than it reports to the American people, encouraging mission creep and rendering contractors virtually invisible. Private military companies are multinational corporations that recruit globally. Uh, here again, 33% of private military contractors in Afghanistan are U.S. citizens. Uh, Senate investigation in 2010 found uh, murder, kidnapping, bribery, and anti-coalition activities with these subs, the subcontractors that private military contractors hire to get the job done, uh, the job is whatever the Pentagon tells them to do. But in 2010, a report titled Warlord Incorporated 
The House of Representatives found the Department of Defense had hired warlords for security services. A U.S. Senate investigation in 2010 found that the British private military company Armour Group subcontracted two Afghan military companies that it called Mr. White and Mr. Pink to provide guard force. The investigation found murder, kidnapping, bribery, anti-coalition activities. So unlike the Pentagon or CIA, private military companies do not report to Congress circumventing democratic accountability of the armed forces. Well, we don't have democratic accountability at all. So whether they're CIA, Pentagon, uh, private security contractors, all of that stuff is gone. Gone by the wayside. Now everything is just rogue. Our government, military, our rogue armies uh, and officials. So worse, they shield themselves from inquiry by invoking the need to protect proprietary information and are not subject to Freedom of Information Acts. Wow, act requests. Unlike the military or intelligence community, uh, this makes them ideal for dangerous missions requiring plausible deniability. So we've got them in Yemen, Nigeria, Ukraine, Syria, possibly Iraq. No, they're in Iraq. Uh, we've got them in Somalia, Sudan. We have them in an awful lot of African countries. So with no international law existing to regulate the mercenary industry, what we're left with, anyone with enough money can wage war for any reason they want to. Uh, then new superpowers will emerge, the ultra-rich, multinational corporations, oil companies, oligarchs, all have their armies. Substituting U.S. troops for private military contractors in Afghanistan. June of 2017, Trump gave the Department of Defense authorization to increase the size of U.S. military forces in Afghanistan. Wait a second. You said you were bringing the troops home. You were going to... Uh, what? What? Wait. Oh, right. You also said like 15 times that we defeated ISIS. All right, you just can't listen to Trump because it doesn't, he, well, you really should listen <laughs> because if you're not catching that one week he, he can say something and then the next week uh, he says the opposite and it's become so obvious that I wonder if they do this just to see if the American people are awake enough to respond. No, they're not. Sleeping. Um, there are 8,700 U.S. troops stationed in Afghanistan, plus an additional 13,322 troops committed uh, to NATO's International Security Assistance Force, supporting and training a little over 360,000 Afghan security forces. Do you understand that we never intended to come out of Iraq or Afghanistan or Syria uh, Libya, none of these countries, and you know, in part, it is to steal the resources, the oil, the minerals, but it's also to establish ourselves with military bases. And I just saw another article, and I didn't even read it, but yet another military base is going up in a country close to Iran. The idea is full spectrum dominance that we have dominance over the entire world. This is to complete the full takeover of the Middle East. Um, in addition, there are 23,525 private contractors in Afghanistan providing a variety of services worth over $2.6 billion. Your money, your tax dollars, Yes, private military industry industry could be substitute for U.S. military forces. So, Prince is partially responsible for modernizing the private army for the post-9-11 world, outsourcing militaries to cheap specialized labor pools, 
skirting traditional regulations meant to ensure accountability for armed forces, his journey from hiring mercenaries to help bolster the U.S. occupation in Iraq to China is long, dizzying, and includes stops around the world to train Colombian mercenaries to help make a private army for the UAE and outfitting crop duster planes with missiles to be fired at Armenians. Wow! This guy really sounds more like a general, a military general, rather than just a private citizen, Eric Prince. Well, the outfitting of crop duster planes with missiles, um, yeah, he got fined or caught. Uh, a lot of these private security contractors are engaging in arms trafficking. Uh, so, um, you can check out where he is, you know, all over the world by this Google Earth image. Oh, he's in the United States. And the natural disasters that occur via weather weapons. Very often they have private contractors go in or they're there prior to Mozambique. You know, the cyclone that wiped out an awful lot of Mozambique. It seems that there is regime change taking place in Mozambique. Ah, right after that cyclone. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, this guy, Eric Prince, is all over, you know. Even in China. What kind of patriot are you, Eric Prince? You're in China? Yeah, I'm in China. And I uh, got, I don't know, about one trillion dollar bosses in China. So, um, what does this say here? His sister, Betsy Davos, married into one of the most influential political families in the Midwest, the Davoses, and began helping to run the Republican Party machine in Michigan. That marriage, which tied the Prince and Davos families together, has given Eric unprecedented political access into the federal government. His list of close allies includes Steve Bannon. Oh, Eric Prince on the board of We Build the Wall, Incorporated, you know, that GoFundMe that Brian, um, f uh, is it Folkage? Fol Colfish? I, now I can't even remember his last name. All right. GoFundMe raised nearly $21 million to build the wall, getting donations from Americans. Uh, it just so happens that Eric Prince and Steve Bannon are on the board of Brian. Ah, oh, Jesus. Hang on. Kind of scary to see how your memory is just... Well, going away, Brian Colfash. All right, um, and the team, this guy put together this uh, nonprofit and he selected Steve Bannon, a, a guy from Council on Foreign Relations, this guy, John Daniel Morin, who is a life member of the Council on Foreign Relations. And no, this guy is the life member, I'm sorry, Dr. Robert Spaulding. He is the life member of the Council on Foreign Relations. But Eric Prince, Eric Prince sits on the board. We build the wall along with Steve Bannon. Don't you think that's interesting? I do. Um, so his unprecedented political access into the federal government, his list, Prince's, Eric Prince's list, of close allies, Steve Bannon, U.S. President Donald Trump's former chief strategist. His sister gives him a direct line of access to Trump himself. 
Blackwater mercenary prince has new one trillion dollar Chinese bosses. Lot of conflict of interest with this Navy SEAL patriot. Really? All right. Um, before I play some of that, which I'm just going to play a few minutes of it. Here, Blackwater founder Eric Prince directly asked about my reporting on his moves in Afghanistan. Um, Blackwater founder Eric Prince and his aims to exploit resources and minerals in Afghanistan. Okay, this is a YouTube video, but what I want to bring your attention to is the founder of the notorious and now defunct Blackwater, well, Blackwater's back, right? We are coming, has been making headlines for trying to privatize the Afghan war. Details from Afghan officials and conversations with two sources knowledgeable about Prince's movements in Cabal say he is looking into opportunities to mine Afghan minerals and visit the country in early and visited the country in early 2018 and September to explore these possibilities. Prince, who is the chairman of the logistics firm Frontier Services Group, yeah, he has created an awful lot of countries, uh, companies, and uh, d d switches names a lot. You know, Blackwater, then it was Z, then it's Academy. Um, it's all to fool the American public as well as, you know, the people around the world where Blackwater is, uh, people don't like Blackwater. So now we're Z. Oh, I guess you're not Blackwater. So, all right. Um, he, uh, to mine the country's minerals, he pitched the plan to the White House. His proposal included finding rare earth minerals in some of Afghanistan's most volatile regions, allowing the United States to source valuable lithium from four batteries, along with other deposits, and provide jobs to Afghanis, Afghans. An Afghan security company that was assisting Prince requested a meeting for him with Afghan mining minister Nar Nargis Nihan to discuss his plans to invest in the country and described him as a current advisor to President Trump. Okay. Um, since this is 32 minutes long, uh, I will link below. This is an incredible interview. Eric Prince. This was very recent, March 18, March 8, 2019. And they he goes into asking him an awful lot of questions, um, questions from the floor, from, you know, just um, the audience at the end. And he has a reporter there from Iraq along with Sean McFate, who sees Eric Prince's, uh, he providing services to China as a real conflict of interest, considering that China, well, the Pentagon apparently, I didn't know this, but the Pentagon has um, decided to move away from counterterrorism and focus on Russia and China. But aren't we hearing that well, we still have this terrorist threat. So, um, if China is our adversary, and Eric Prince, you know, poses as this great patriot, providing services to China, but they also talk about what took place in Iraq, um, and uh, China, his wanting to privatize the Afghan war and other subjects. Um, listen, it is important who you associate with. So Brian Colfage bringing on board, literally to the board of 
We Build the Wall, Incorporated, Eric Prince, Trump, and Eric Prince. Look, we have, I think, become so desensitized and so blind to evil. We like to overlook a lot. We have become utterly depraved, depraved. It's like, on the whole, Americans don't care about much of anything. Trump supporters, you really need to look at who you are supporting. This is, uh, you cannot get, you can't even get to the starting line of fighting evil when you just refuse to acknowledge the evil. The evil is in the White House. It's all over Washington, D.C. It's sitting right there on this stage, the guy on the left. Um, so it's, well, I'll link below to all of this. The first link will be this interview, and I hope that you do watch it. Um, Eric Prince, I was going to say he's the poster boy, you know, for psychopathy. No, because we have way too many poster boys <laughs> for psychopathy. He's just one among a whole lot. Americans, okay? You've got to face the truth about your own country and stop scapegoating all other countries like Israel, okay? Israel, yeah. The government, the military, evil. But so is the United States. And for those who think it's only the Jews, you really need, you need to think about that thinking of yours because it's not. All right? We've got an awful lot of Christians who are evil, atheists who are evil, Muslims who are evil, uh, the Jesuits are very much involved, the Jews are very much involved, uh, the, the Zionists, I should say, um, the Christians are very much involved. Please, you know, when, when you're focused and you can only see one particular people as if it's the whole people, there's something missing in your thinking. You're, you're not seeing clearly. And you'll miss the evil taking place all over the place that are not the Jews. The Jews are just like the Christians here. Most of them. There are Jews that are fighting their own government. And just like every other nation, whether it be you know, Britain, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, Australia, uh, Spain, France, uh, United States, Canada, Mexico, uh, all over the place. Israel, too. You got an awful lot of Jews who choose willful ignorance because they, too, are just as self-centered as the Christians are, as the atheists are, as the New Agers are. When you say that this is a spiritual war, I get it. But I'd like to ask those, <clears throat> what, what exactly do you mean by, you know, we're not supposed to be fighting principalities or whatever. Uh, it's a spiritual war. What do you mean? See, I get it. But I'd like to know what you mean when you throw down those comments. It's a spiritual war. What does that mean for you? So, while I'd love to see a real fight take place against the evil, it's very frustrating seeing it win time and time again. But anyway, all links are below. Ciao, guys.